Hi there, I'm Vienno and this is my 20th video tutorial on D3. In this tutorial I'll go over the very basics of creating maps in D3. So in this case uh, we'll create a map of Sweden divided by its counties. Um, so whenever you have whenever you want to create maps you need to have some get some map data obviously. So uh, in my case I have this Sweden geojson file and the geojson file format is um, you could call this file json as well it won't matter but the file uh, the way you store this geographic data in json in the json format is called the uh, geojson as uh, simple as that so we have all these coordinates here and um, each of these objects it's a lot of data each of these are counties so all this code is one county and if this looks scary um, don't be afraid <laughs> we we don't have to mess around with this manually fortunately uh, the way I got this data was actually um, from a shape file which is another uh, file format for storing geographic data and it's much more common than the than the GeoJSON file format. And I used a software, a, a program called the QGIS, um, to convert my shape file to GeoJSON. Uh, but if you just want to play around with um, any map whatsoever, you can just Google for uh, GeoJSON maps or something along those lines, and you'll find some uh, GeoJSON files. So, uh, enough talking, let's begin uh, creating our map. Uh, we'll start, as usual, by loading our data and creating our callback function. Um, so, we're, we'll append uh, the data, as usual. Um, each county will be a path. So I'll say uh, we'll store each path uh, in one in separate um, G elements. So I'll say var group is equal to canvas select all G, and uh, the data will be data features since uh, this array of objects is called features and uh, enter append g okay okay so we've bound our data now the next thing okay so as you know the earth is not flat well i hope you know that uh, the earth is not flat so whenever we want to depict it on a flat surface we need to use some kind of projection and uh, D3 has a number of different projections that we can use. Um, and as you can see, depending on which one we, we choose, uh, the map will look, um, yeah, they look kind of different. Uh, in this tutorial, we'll be using this Mercator uh, projection. I don't really know how to pronounce that, but uh, that's, that's the name. And um, yeah, that's basically the the only new thing I, I'd say in this um, tutorial, the projection part. So we'll create our projection and store it in a variable, and we'll say d three dot geo dot mercator, and then we'll also need to create a path generator, which we've done in a couple of other other videos. So I'll say um, d3.geo.path, which is the name of the uh, geographic path generator. And uh, using the projection method, I'll pass in the projection to that path generator. So it knows how to uh, translate these coordinates to pixels on our, on our uh, canvas. Okay, so uh, let's move on and append 
a path to each of our G elements. So, oops, I will say var areas group append path and the path uh, data will come from the path generator and we can give this a class so we'll we'll um, we'll do some uh, CSS CSS styling later on and let's give them a fill so let's just say steel blue and um, yeah let's take a look at how this looks so save and refresh I don't know I don't know if you can even see this but we actually have our map here already uh, it's that simple to make it bigger uh, we need to modify our projection so we can use of the, some of the built-in methods that d3 uh, the d3 projection uh, comes with and one of those one of those uh, methods is the scale method so I've, I've done some trial and uh, error um, in preparation for this so I know that the best scale for this particular map is uh, 7300 and we'll also give it a translate of um, 0 1980 okay save and refresh okay so we have our uh, we have our map here so I mean from this point on it's really just um, it's nothing new nothing that we haven't um, uh, looked at before well maybe one thing so let's let's append some some text to each of these counties uh, the the j the g geojson file that we use have ex apart from the coordinates it has some additional properties so for instance uh, this ln num property stores the name of the county uh, so we can use that um, and it's an and the name is uh, stored in the properties um, property so if we want to append those labels we can just say group append text and um, to to specify where on the map um, each of these labels will be placed we can use another property of the path generator so we can say um, okay so we'll make this a function of our data and we'll return path dot centroid d zero so what this means is uh, the centroid calculates the um, the center of the path and we'll give it uh, the data as an argument and this returns an array of two numbers uh, which correspond to the x coordinate and the y coordinate so if we say zero in between the square brackets we're returned with the x coordinate so I hope that makes sense and of course for the y y position we can just repeat this and replace this by one and we'll make the text a function of the data as well so like I said we'll return d properties um, ln okay so let's take a look at this and of course you need to um, apply some additional styling to make this look good we can we can settle with just setting the um, text anchor for now so I'll say text anchor middle save and refresh okay so of course we would do we would um, apply some additional styling if this was a real um, project that we were working on 
But yeah, I think I'll settle with that for now. This is this was the very very basics of creating maps, and the only new part um, really is these two lines here, the projection and the path, uh, the geo path generator. Um, I think this should make sense. I won't I won't lie and say it's easy to create maps because it's um, well. The difficult part usually is converting uh, your data to the right format and using the right coordinate system um, and so on. But once you've got your um, geographic data um, well formatted and uh, in the proper yeah in the proper format, it's it's quite easy as you can see. So yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you later.